Thank you very much, and thank you for the invitation. Thank you for giving me the opportunity of this talk. Uh, okay, so I will talk about a very classical topic. So, oh, it's a little, okay. So my topic today, situation is the following. You start with M. A smooth, compact manifold oriented and connected. It's not really important, but okay. And what you want to do to study. Oh, you had you okay, you take an example where. Uh, this M admits complex structures. Otherwise, there is nothing to say because I'm interested in studying the set of complex structures on M. So assume M is uh, uh, admits complex structure. And if you want to study complex structures on M. So classically, there are two, two ways of doing that. The first way is you say, OK, I will define a moduli space. So Teichmuller refers to that. Of course, it refers to the Teichmuller space. I will define it uh, later on, but let's just say that it's uh, a variant of the moduli space. So you take the set of all complex structures on M, modulo biromorphism here in the Teichmuller case, it's a bit more precise, it's modulo biromorphism isotopic to the identity. And uh, OK, you have a, a nice set, but the problem here, so the construction is easy because it's just a definition. The problem is to put a nice structure on it. Of course, uh, the idea is that uh, you would like your Teichmuller space, let's say T, uh, to have the same type of structures as a uh, structure you consider. So you would like your uh, T to be a complex manifold a, or an analytic space or something like that. But it's a bit more complicated. And the other classical ways of uh, uh, dealing with a subject is to say, OK, it's not a good idea to look at this type of set of moduli space. And it's better to look at families. So here, you look at smooth, proper and smooth uh, morphisms between analytic, analytic spaces, sorry. And in that case, Of course, you don't have uh, this problem of putting a nice structure on this fact, on these uh, families. Oh, okay. And of course, you want that uh, in that situation, the fibers are compact complex manifolds. And what you want is that they are all diffeomorphic to your M. It's P minus one T are uh, diffeomorphic to M. So every fiber is a realization of a compact of a complex structure on M. Of course, here you don't have any problem of uh, uh, regularity of structure because you you want you fix everything is analytic here. But the game is to show that there exists uh, uh, there exists a family which is bigger than the other. So you look for the existence of a biggest family 
And this is given by Kuranishi theorem. Of course, I will uh, be more precise later on, but just for this picture, this is given by the Kuranishi theorem, and you have the Kuranishi space, which is the base of this family. And of course, the Kuranishi in the title refers to the Kuranishi space of deformation theory. Okay, so this, and we have a touch measure space. Okay. Of course, here you have a global point of view, here is something local in general. Well, in, in uh, Kodaya, Spencer, and Kuranishi theory, it's something local. But of course, you can, here, if you have some, your set of complex structure, you can look at the neighborhood of a point in your moduli space. So today, everything will, well, no, I, I shouldn't say that. Most of the parts will be local, but there are some, some global parts also. Okay, so uh, what I want to do is to explore the relationship between these two, these two approaches. And And what I will try to convince you is that uh, the problem here is that we should replace these spaces by some stacks. To have a, a better picture. So uh, what I want to to say at the beginning is here, here I already said that you have a problem to put nice structure on the Teichmuller space, but you have this problem because you want, or I want, or anybody wants to put a, a structure of complex analytic space. But there are some more generalized notions like stacks that are more adapted to that. In the other way, the Kuranishi space is analytic space by definition, but it has some drawbacks. I will come back to that later. And if you want something which has better properties, you have also to replace it with stacks. So uh, my talk today is to convince analytic geometers that uh, really stack theory has been created for that. And that, uh, OK, uh, it shouldn't be, uh, it should be a notion that we investigate and it's not just only for algebraic geometers, okay? So please don't let me alone on this subject. <laughs> it's too hard for me, so I need some help. And really, I think there are interesting things to do, uh, importing these concepts, which are well developed in uh, algebraic geometry, but the importation to this case is not so easy. Uh, so there are... Uh, Many, many, many work is needed. Okay, so this is a picture. So I will sum up this in a question which was asked by Catanese. So if you compare, okay, your Teichmuller space and the Kuranish space, what you obtain is that here you localize, so you start with some x naught, which is a complex manifold, compact complex manifold, diffeomorphic to M, and you look at the Teichmuller space, which I will define in a moment. You look at the Teichmuller space at, uh, at x naught, okay. Then you look, x naught and also a Kuranishi space, Kuranishi family, deformation with a fiber, with a fiber which is deformorphic to x naught. So of course the points of k naught uh, encodes complex structures because they correspond here to, to 
complex structures on M, okay, to the fibers, via the fibers. So you have, uh, you have a map, surjective map, so, well, locally surjective map. So here I am considering T at X naught and K0, so you have a locally surjective map. So in general, this is just a topological space. And this is an analytic space, so this is just a continuous map. So the question is to, uh, is to know when this projection map is a local, when is P, sorry, a local homeomorphism. Of course, the idea is that uh, you would like your touch space to be analytic. You have your Kuranishi space, which is analytic and which contains uh, all the complex structure close to X0. So you want to compare the two, sp the two spaces. If you have such a local homeomorphism, then T becomes at least locally analytic space. And the two approaches are the same. Okay. So families or uh, moduli space approaches are the same. So in that case, T is locally analytic space. So there are lots of cases where this works, but they are all very special. For example, if you have, if X naught has trivial canonical bundle, then it works. So I will sum up this, uh, when, the, when, when this is affirmative, following Katanez, uh, I will say that kuragal Teich holds. Okay, and so there are many cases where this is true, but it's, it's a bit like a zoology. If you put these conditions, okay, that works. If you put this one, okay, that works. But I don't think there is a real nice characterization of the equality Kuragal Teich. So there is no good characterization, as far as I know, of Kour and Galtaich, or Taich and Galcourt. And my goal today is to reformulate this question for stacks. So I will uh, explain you why I would like to replace the Tashmiller space by a stack that I will define uh, till a certain point. Also, I will explain you, to you why I want to replace the Kuranishi space with a stack and then once you, you did this job, well, you can ask the same question, but for stacks. And what you gain is that the answer will be always yes, at least in the Keller case. Okay, uh, so perhaps two or three remarks before uh, entering really into the subject. The first one is the magic words today, of course, tax, but also automorphisms. If you already worked on uh, 
on deformation problems, you know that most of the, almost all the problems come from the fact that there are automorphisms and they can vary uh, for the, the, when you vary the complex structure on the fixed manifold M. So this will be the main point. And there will be a missing word or some missing words. I won't talk about periods or things like that, or hodge structure, variation of hodge structure, because I will really be interested in the most general case. So I am interested in a case I also consider non keller manifolds. Okay. So of course in that in the non keller case that's not really pertinent. Although, at the end, of course, uh, we'll see that there is a dichotomy between the Keller and non-Keller case, but. Okay. So, let us begin with a Teichmüller space, and then its tag version. So M uh, is uh, as before, and what you do is the following. If you want to put a complex structure on M, you just undo TM with a linear operator. Okay, linear on the fibers with G square is minus identity. So this is just a multiplication by I. This tells you that your tangent bundle has complex fibers. Okay, and of course, if you want to turn this into a complex structure on M, you need an integrability condition. which I want to write down explicitly. And then, thanks to Nuremberg-Nirenberg theorem, this gives you, it is equivalent, let's say. In to endowing M with structure of compact complex manifold. So your T, more formally, starts with taking all these complex operators, that's the name of these operators, so okay, by complex operator I mean that it's already integrable, huh? and of course this is this is something which is much too big. Uh, you can think of this as a sort of section of a fiber, smooth section of a fiber bundle. So this is infinite dimensional. But the point here is that I'm not interested in, well, in T, I want to look at the classes of, of complex structure on M, modulo some, something, modulo biromorphism, isotopic to the identity. So here the point is that if you take F, of F, of M, sorry, you can pull back a complex operator. You obtain another complex operator on M. And of course, if you look at the associated complex manifold, what I write down like this, then F or F minus one, we realizes a biomorphism between it's just 
a diffeomorphism which commutes with a complex structure. So by definition, it's a bilomorphism between, well, between the complex manifolds. Which I shall denote by xg, xg and uh, x f star j. Okay, so what I am saying is that you have to take the quotient by this action of a diffeomorphism group. Then if you really want t, the subtlety is that I don't take all the diffeomorphism group. I take just diff not, which is the connected component of the identity. Okay, so this is a diffeomorphism that are smoothly isotopic to the identity. Just a basic example to, to just check that we, are, we agree on the definitions. If you start with M being S1 cross S1, and putting a complex structure on M is to turn it into a, an elliptic curve. And what you obtain as a T is the upper half plane. And you see the difference with the uh, moduli space. It's really a, the upper half plane. It's not. It's quotient by SL2 of Z. Okay. So it's different from the moduli space. So this, which would be a quotient by SL2 of Z. But of course, I'm not interested in a one-dimensional case, which is very well known, and there are lots of wonderful properties of each Tashmiller spaces and. Here I am interested in dimension of M at least four. We all dimension. So this definition, this definition makes sense. Well, it is this one. But uh, the problem here is that in the surface case, you have this wonderful property that uh, your Teichmuller space is always a complex manifold. Okay, I start with if you start with a complex real surface, then you obtain. Uh, if this is this is a theorem, of course, you obtain a, a complex uh, manifold as Teichmuller space. But in the general case, you obtain something which is just a topological space. You can put a topology like that and take the Gaussian topology. That's not. It's not very complicated. So in higher dimensional, the problem is that it is just a topological space. And there are very basic examples. What is not locally, usually, or sometimes, or in many examples, as you want, usually not uh, locally. Hausdorff. So that prevents T from being endowed with a structure of complex manifolds, even locally, or with a structure of an analytic space. So this is something which, in general, is not complex. So 
The point is that you can turn this into an analytic stack. So if, uh, let's see. No. Let's assume that automorphism group of xj for j class in t is bonded by a constant independent of j of j okay so this is the, if this is the case, then t can be turned into an analytic stack. Uh, of course, we turn like this, this theorem is empty because all in is this definition. All the work is to understand what is that and to fix the notation and to fix the conventions. But I won't do that today, otherwise I will uh, spend uh, the, f uh, the entire hour on, on that problem. Let me just say some something about the picture. What, what does this mean we are really? So first this means that you have to think of T locally. But first T is now something which is analytic, okay? So we start with a topological object, now we have something analytic. Then locally, you have something geometrically, uh, which is, uh, has the quotient of an analytic space by a group, by a Lie group, complex Lie group, acting with a fixed point. So this is really a, a wolf picture, but you must think of, you have complex manifolds and uh, their singular counterpart analytic uh, space. Then you can, uh, you can define our befalls geometrically. This is just a space which locally is the quotient of Cn by a finite group acting with a fixed point. You can, you can imagine a singular counterpart on that, analytic space with a finite group action. And then here it's, it's uh, even more complicated because what you have locally is an analytic space with a complex Lie group. It's not a finite group acting with a fixed point. But you may imagine that you have charts like that. Of course, all the stack machinery is to make this into really an analytic object you can work with. The point also is that uh, T contains more information. T as a stack contains more information than the topological space because In the stack structure, you see the automorphism group. You see this, this Lie group acting, and these Lie groups are the automorphism group of a complex manifold. So it contains so the automorphism group of a complex manifold you consider are included in the structure. And in fact, what you have is all the, all the analytic data you need to construct all deformations. So knowing T, well, T contains all the information needed to construct all deformations so 
So of course, all deformations, if this, is, if this is T of M, I talk about deformation with fibers deformorphic to M. All deformations uh, above all basis, all analytic basis. In, what, in which sense? Uh, I mean, I mean, no, in, uh, in the sense that the problem you have before as a topological space, if you associate to this the topological space, it's the same as before. So uh, you just put more structure, but you, you don't hide the, the pathologies of the associated topological space. Okay, so now we have a stack, Teichmuller stack, which is always analytic. Okay, perhaps you think this is not very interesting, but okay, let's try to do something with it. Then we have to talk about Kuranishi space or stack. Let me see if I'm not forgetting something important. Which is probably the case. Ah, yes. Uh, just something here. When I talk about the automorphism group, uh, there is something to say. So here, by automorphism group, I'm looking at the, uh, since I am looking at the Teichmuller space, I'm looking at the automorphism. So if you take automorphism group of some uh, manifold XJ, these automorphisms of XJ, which are smoothly isotopic to the identity. This is a problem because I work uh, with a diff not of M, a smoothly isotopic to the identity. And this is something which is different, so I will denote this as O1. This is a very bad notation, but I don't find a more concrete one. The point is that this is, of course, included in the automorphism group of Xj, but it may be different. And, of course, it contains the connected component of the identity in this, in uh, hot xj, but it's also different. But it may be different, so there are some examples, I've constructed some examples. There exist examples uh, of three folds with hot one divided by hot zero, which is a finite group. Sorry? Hot zero is just uh, a connected component of the identity. out of xj. So these are uh, automorphism which are isotopic to the identity but through biodomorphism, not through diffeomorphism. That's not the same. Okay. So this is a bit, uh, this is a complication but okay. It's the price to pay to use the Teichmuller space and not the moduli space. Okay. So uh,
Okay, so now I have to deal with uh, cool energy space or so stack. So your Kuanishi family, so let's call it K0 over, well, capital K0 over K0, curl K0. And uh, you, of course, have a point zero, which corresponds to your base manifold. Here I am working locally, so I start recall with X0, which is a compact complex manifold diffeomorphic to M. And Kuranishi proved in 62 that there exists uh, a family which has nice properties. So, in fact, I will take germs of family that will be easier to state the things. So if you take any neighborhood of zero in K0, if you make a restriction, I will consider it's the same family. I'm just saying that, okay? So I will denote that with K0 zero, and here, like that. So this will uh, be easier, and I won't be able, uh, well, I won't have to, to, al to always say that I take a smaller neighborhood and things like that. So Kuranishi tells you that there exists a unique germ of, the, of deformation up to isomorphism. Such that uh, it contains all the other families, okay? So every time you have a, a family, let's say x over b, germ of family, with, of course, central fiber, which is x0. And this family is obtained by pullback from this one. So you have something like that. You have analytic morphism here, and here your family is isomorphic to the pullback family. So your Kuranishi family contains all uh, the possible, uh, the small deformation of X0. In particular, it contains all the complex structures close to uh, the complex structure uh, represented by X0. And the second property is that it is minimal. Well, let's say that the dimension, so K0 analytic space, you can look at the dimension of, of its Zariski tension space at zero, and this dimension is minimal amongst families satisfying the point one. So let's just say that among family that contains all deformations, this is the more economic one, the smallest one, okay? Well, um, so why this is not very, I say, okay, you have your Kuranishi space, and analytic space, and I told you before, but it has not all the properties we would like it to have. And the problem here is that missing property is that we would like F to be unique. So the missing property in order, which is a universal property, we would like F to be unique. And of course, the problem here is linked with automorphisms of families. Because if you have, uh, if you imagine you have uh, an isomorphism here of K0 which lifts 
as an automorphism of a family above. Then, of course, in this diagram, you can replace f with uh, uh, g, uh, g composed with f. And if g is not the identity, well, you have an over map which makes all this thing work. Okay? So, g. If v is not the identity, so if you can find such uh, automorphisms, then you don't have unicity. Now, uh, it's different uh, from f. Okay, Et you don't have so. Of course, in general, in deformation theory, in order to have something uh, which behaves. Uh, in a better way, uh, one includes the marking of families. So, uh, small remark. Usually, families are marked. Which says that you add to your family precise identification between uh, x0 and the central fiber. And of course, when you do that, uh, you ask the morphisms of families to preserve this, uh, this uh, marking. So this is a way of saying that you just, uh, you just let automorphism of families that are the identity on the central fiber. But even doing that, in general, it is not true that this f is unique. Okay. So, that's, so even with markings, you don't have universality. Okay, and the problems are, of course, is linked with this automorphism of families. So, especially if you start with uh, with an automorphism of the central fiber, uh, so I won't mark. Huh? My purpose, it's better not to, uh, not to mark. So if you start with an automorphism of a central fiber, so as before, I am working in out one now, then it extends, and it may have many extensions as an automorphism of family. And of course, okay, the, when the extension is the identity and the base space, this is not very, very important, but I want to be very precise here, but uh, okay. Uh, so the problem appears when this is not the identity and the base space. And this appears when you have uh, your automorphism group, uh, when the automorphism group of a central fiber, as I mentioned, strictly greater than the other fibers. So in fact, if you look at this problem, so the automorphism you are looking for, you can, OK can prove that. So the problem is that you, you have to kill this, uh, this automorphism of families. And the, pro and the fact is you can prove that this automorphism of family, of germs of family, are in fact in one-one correspondence with the section 
of k0 e0 1 of x0. Well, the maps. Okay. So what I am saying is that if you want something which is really universal in all the cases, you have to get rid of isotomorphism. So you have to take your Kuranishi space and in the sort take the quotient by uh, the action of isotomorphism. So this is not an action. It's something much more complicated, but let's say that it's an action. So in fact, let's say that roughly speaking, This is the best picture you can, the, the easiest picture to, to describe. O1 acts on K0, on K0 and in fact on the family. And if you want to have something universal, you have to get rid of this. Well, I am interested only on, the, on what happens on the base space. And we have to take the quotient. So what I am saying is that if you want the space which has uh, this property and which is universal is not a space, it's a stack. It's a quotient of K0 by a pseudo action of the automorphism group of a central fiber. So this is my Kronishi stacks stack. So once again, the idea is that, uh, as before, you don't, the Kuranishi space don't, doesn't have all the properties you would like it to have because you want it absolutely to have analytic space. So it's the best approximation if you want to stay in the category of analytic spaces. Okay, so now we have a Teichmuller space and we a stack, sorry, and a Kuranishi stack, and we can ask the same question as Katan has one, when does, uh, does these two stacks coincide? Okay. Here yeah, there is no problem of uh, one is topological, uh, topologic, and the other is uh, analytic. Everything is analytic. So we are looking for an isomorphism of stacks. So let's say we would like that the two models uh, given by these two stacks are the same. Okay. So to, un to compare the two stacks, I have to give you a more precise model, local model of uh, the Teichmuller stack. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so, um, so we need a local model. Of a Teichmuller stack, the Kuranishi stack is local, so there is no problem. Of the Teichmuller stack, I need something more local. Now, um, of course, locally, you always start with a Kuranishi space. Kuranishi space encodes all complex structures close to a fixed one. So this is uh, the, your starting point. So you start with K0. And then you have to understand the problem is that K0 
So, uh, different points of cannot may encode the same many complex manifold up to biromorphism isotopic to the identity. So you have to understand what are the repetitions in the Kuranishi space. Okay. Of course, when you have an automorphism of family as before, the action of the automorphism on the base space, on the Kuranishi space, tells you that some points are to be identified. So you have to get rid of these automorphisms. But there is some, uh, so you have to divide also by automorphisms or local automorphisms, in fact, of k not which sends complex structures. I mean, the points of k not are complex structures, so you think of it. You look not at, qua at any uh, automorphism of k not, but you look at automorphism of k not, which sends a point encoding some complex structure onto a biolomorphic complex structure. And the trouble here is that uh, you may imagine this type of phenomenon. You have K naught. And the trouble is if you have some sequence of points Okay, this is zero, this should be in let's say G G1, Gn, okay, Jn. Okay, and you assume that the encode also X naught. So if you have this type of situation uh, by the university, well, by the unicity, sorry, of the Kuranishi space, you see that you will have some local automorphism of K0, which identifies a, a complete neighborhood of zero into a complete neighborhood of J, N, and, and so on. The problem with that is that it's not linked with automorphism of a central fiber. Okay? In this type of phenomenon, you don't have any, any your automorphism, your local automorphism of K0 are not sending zero to zero. So they are not fixing the central fiber, so you don't, they are not associated to automorphism of uh, X0. So it's a different phenomenon. Of course, you will tell me that at some time, at some point, I will take the germ. Okay, but even taking the germs, if I have really a sequence like that, this phenomena, doesn't disappear. So uh, if, I really, if I really want to, to understand locally the Tashmiller stack, geometrically, that's just that. It's K0, and you have to divide by all these local automorphisms. Some of them are, as before, fixing zero. Others are not fixing zero. OK. So the problem is that some local automorphisms may not fix zero. And since I am working with germs, if it's just one isolated thing, that's not, that's not a problem. I just take a smaller neighborhood and that's all. <laughs> but I have a problem if I have a sequence of uh, local automorphism like that. And the problem is when you have such a sequence which does not converge to an automorphism of a central fiber. Not, not converging. Now like that, it's like on the drawing. And uh, not converging 
to an element of mod 1 of x naught. But now if you are in the killer case, that cannot happen. And that's Keller case means x naught is Keller. Because if x naught is Keller, it is well known that all the complex structure close to x naught, what is the result of Kodaira Spencer? All the complex structures close to x naught are also Keller, and then you can apply. Uh, Lieberman's theorem and things like that about capacity, uh, the capacity theorem of Lieberman on uh, cycle spaces to prove that this cannot happen. So I don't, don't give any detail, but it's not difficult. So indeed, uh, In the Keller case, the additional phenomenon that could appear and make you and make a difference between the Tachmuller stack locally and the Kuhanishi stack does not appear. So in the Keller case, you have Kuh egal Tach, of course, as stacks. Uh, so there are Several important remarks here. The first one is that if you want to use Lieberman's theorem, you need to have uh, automorphism that are isotopic to the identity. Otherwise, it doesn't work. So this is why I use the Tachmuller space. I could have used the moduli space, but at that point, if you want to say uh, core equal moduli, that's completely false, even in the Keller case. It's uh, even clear in, uh, with, a complex to, uh, with a complex story of dimension two. You don't have to take uh, very complicated examples. So here, you really need the Teichmuller space, the Teichmuller stack. Second important point is that, of course, uh, it's completely false in the non setting. So uh, I don't know what happened. I don't know. In the non keller case, but what is completely clear is that this strategy is uh, a place. So that should exist. In another way, I really convinced that there must exist examples in the non-Keller case where core is different from Teich. But I don't, I don't know of a precise example. Keller case. But you think that one should be able to find Well, cool is different from Taish. And uh, third remarks, and I will stop with that. Uh, so in the Keller case, that really tells you that um, uh, all the geometry of a Teichmuller space, the Teichmuller stack is local. Okay. I did not explain why uh, this talk is related to foliations, but it is related to foliation because in the first theorem I didn't prove the fact that it is an analytic stack. What I really do is to say that the diffeomorphism group acts on the set of complex integrable operators by defining a sort of generalized uh, foliation. And then what I construct, in fact, is the holonomic groupoid of this structure. OK. So if you see this with a point of view of foliation, 
what I am telling you, uh, roughly speaking, is that in the Keller case, uh, there is no holonomy or just finite groups acting as holonomy. Because uh, also I, uh, I forgot to say that uh, the Keller case, of course, Lieberman theorem tells you that hot one divided by hot zero is finite. So if you think of this as a, if you think of this stack as a leaf space, as an holonomy groupoid, then I am saying that in the Keller case there is no holonomy, no interesting holonomy. Okay. And I am looking for uh, interesting holonomy in the non-Keller case. This is the relation uh, with, uh, with foliation. I think I will stop here.